So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to solve one-step equations. Right here, we can see that we have the problem x plus 32 equals 90. We're going to be able to solve this equation in only one step. Now, in order to solve any type of algebraic equation, we do need to remember this one saying that I have written up top. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. All right, it's going to be super important. It's just like with equivalent fractions, where you say what I do to the top, I have to do to the bottom. In algebra, what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Now, in this first problem here, I see that I have x plus 32 equals 90. A lot of students are going to say, well, I don't see two different sides. I only see, you know, one problem. Well, in order to get them to visually see that there are two different sides, and what the two sides we're talking about, the two different sides of the equal sign, right, so we have this side and this side, um, we have them draw a line straight down through the equal sign. By doing that, we now have two sides. We have the left side of the line and the right side of the line. So, right now we have x plus 32 is equal to 90. Our ultimate goal is to isolate the variable, to get x by itself. I don't care about x plus 32. I just want to know what is x. So, what I need to do to solve this is I need to do the opposite of plus 32. Well, the opposite of plus 32 is minus 32. Well, I do need to show my work that I am going to subtract 32 over here. That will get me just x. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So if I'm going to subtract 32 over here, I have to subtract 32 on the right side. What happens over here? I have a positive 32 and a negative 32. Those guys cancel out. They become zero. So I don't have anything over here besides just an x, which was our goal. Over here, 90 minus 32 is 58. My equal sign was in the middle before. My equal sign comes straight down. So my answer for this problem, x equals 58. What I always tell my students too, just like in the show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where they ask, is this your final answer? Um, in order to say, yes, this is my final answer, we're just going to box out the problem. That way it gives me a definitive answer. I'm not having to search around for anything else. I know that they boxed out their answer and that's what they're saying is correct. I can always double check my answer by taking what x is, 58, and plugging it back in up here. So we'll do that in a different color here, say green. All right, so I can check and say, okay, 58 plus 32. I'm hoping that equals 90. Um, 8 plus 2 gives me 10, 5 plus 3 gives me 8, plus 1 gives me 9. So I have 90. So 58 plus 32 is indeed 90. Easy way to double check. I always tell them also solving equations, you're guaranteed to get the answer correct as long as you check your work. So I took the 58 and checked it, I got 90. I'm perfect. Remember, what I do to one side, I do to the other. Algebra is going to be about 90% the work, 10% the answer. You need to show that you're subtracting 32 from both sides. So, that's an addition equation. I come down here to a subtraction equation now. I have P minus 4 equals 7. I'm going to draw my line straight down so I have my two sides. Right now over here I have P minus 4. I don't care about that. I want to isolate the variable, get P by itself. So I'm going to do the opposite of subtract 4, I'm going to add 4. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other, so I'm going to add 4 over there. A minus 4 and a plus 4, those cancel out. So I'm just left with P equals 7 plus 4 is 11. And I box out my answer. Now, um, it's a coincidence, I, I just wrote these problems like this. But um, don't always assume that, you know, I always add, subtract, multiply, divide on the left side because the variable is on the left side here. Remember, that's my goal. Isolate the variable. I could have easily written this problem as 7 equals P minus 4. In this case, I'm not going to subtract by 7 just because it's on the left side. I have to look for the variable, P is on the right side here, I would do the same thing. 
I would add four, draw my line there so we have both sides. I'm gonna add four over there, I'm gonna add four over here, and I still get 11 equals P. Now this is just a difference of um, saying P equals 11 or 11 equals P. They are the same thing. Don't get that confused though. I'm isolating where the variable is. I'm not just always doing whatever's on the left hand side. All right, I come down here. We have 8x equals 24. I should realize that that's a multiplication problem by now. So I'm going to draw my line straight down. All right. Um, the opposite of multiplication is division. Now, we're not really going to use this division sign all that often anymore. More, we're going to use a fraction bar. All right. So if this is 8 times x, what I want to do is divide by 8. When I divide by 8 over there, the golden rule tells me to divide by 8 on the other side. Now, while up here my goal was to get p by itself and I'm going to create this to make a 0, multiplication and division are different. The identity is not a 0, so if I add or subtract 0 it doesn't change the problem. I want to make this a 1. The identity is 1. If I multiply or divide by 1, I still get that same number. So 8 divided by 8 just gives me an x. So that's perfect. I isolated my variable. 24 divided by 8, that is going to be 3. And I box out my answer to say that is my answer. Finally, I come down here. We have y divided by, and see, this is just what I was talking about. Sometimes we use it, but not very often. Um, y divided by 5 equals 3. We could also see this problem as y over 5 equals 3. Regardless, they mean the same thing. They're both division. I'm going to work on this one over here with the fraction. Draw my line down. Right now I'm dividing by 5. I want to multiply by 5. Always look for where your variable is. All right. Um, so this I can actually think about as one-fifth of a y. y over 5 is one-fifth y. One-fifth times 5 gives me 1. So I'm just left with 1y is equal to 3 times 5 is 15. And just like with my first problem up here, where I plugged in the 58 and to double check my work, I can do that for any one of these. I can look at, okay, um, 11 minus 4, I sure hope that gives me 7. 8 times 3 should give me 24. And then 15 divided by 5 should equal 3. Now, life would be perfect if we always just had problems like this. However, in real life, we don't just encounter, we're walking down the street and we, somebody asks us, oh, y divided by 5 equals 3. What is y equal to? Um, it's more, we see word problems. All right, so up here, Jessica is baking a cake. The recipe calls for five cups of flour. She already put in two cups. How many more cups does she need to add? I tell them, my students, to go through and underline, in this case I'm going to highlight, my keywords to figure out is this an addition equation, subtraction equation, multiplication, or division. Because if the question does say write an equation, and then I need to solve it. So the first part, as long as I can write it, I'll be able to just follow the same steps I did over here in order to solve. So in this problem, there's a couple keywords. Um, she already put in two cups of flour. Um, how many more? All right, many more. That's going to be our keyword. And then it also kind of gives it away when it says add. So this is going to be an addition equation. Uh, I can use this information now. The recipe calls for five cups. That's how much is total. All right, so I know it needs to equal five. She already put in two cups. So I, how many more do I need to add? So however many cups plus the two she put in is equal to five. Draw my line and I can solve it. Subtract two from both sides and C equals three. Now, the way I tell my kids this also, uh, C equals three is the correct answer to the equation. However, it does not answer my question because if somebody asks you how many more cups of flour does she need to add and you say, oh, C equals three, they're gonna look at you like you, you don't know what you're talking about. 
So you need to write just a short statement to answer this question. How many more cups does she need to add? She needs to add to add three more cups of flour. All right. Right there, if somebody asks you how many more cups does she need to add, you can just say, oh, she needs to add three more cups of flour. And that answers my question. Down here, number two, or my second word problem, I guess, number four. Um, after paying five Bulldog Bucks for a ticket to the ASMS Olympic Games, Daniel has 20 Bulldog Bucks left. How many Bulldog Bucks did he have before buying a ticket? And here, it's a little harder to figure it out but you have to use some context. After paying, all right, well, you have to think, what happens when I pay money? In this case, Bulldog Bucks. I'm losing it, which would be a subtract. Um, left, left could be a keyword here. How many do we have left? And then before buying. All right, remember, buying means I'm losing money. Um, I'm getting something else, tickets, but I'm losing money. So I need to write my subtraction equation here. So we're going to use B for Bulldog Bucks. All right, so the Bulldog Bucks we had at the beginning, we paid five, so we're going to subtract five. We now have 20 left. From here, I can solve it by adding five to both sides, and B equals 25 box out my answer. Once again, how many Bulldog books do you have before buying a ticket? I don't want to say, oh, B equals five. I want to say he had 25 Bulldog books. There we go. And that's my answer. Down here, the area of a rectangular deck is 63 square feet. The deck's width is seven feet. What is the length of the deck? All right, well, right here, area. By now, we should know the formula for area, and I'll write that right here. Area equals length times width. So this is a multiplication equation. It tells me the area, or A, is 63. So I'll write that over here. 63 equals the width is 7. What is the length? L times 7. I could write 7L, um, or I could, you know, I could switch these around, but I, it really doesn't matter. All right, A equals L times W. I'm just going to plug things in how I see it. Draw my line. Right now, I'm multiplying by 7 over here. I want to do the opposite, so I'm going to divide by 7. 63 divided by 7 gives me 9 is equal to L. Box out my answer and then write just a short statement. The length is nine feet. Remember, use the correct label here. They're saying feet, we need to say feet. Finally, Mrs. Fry split a bag of Jolly Ranchers between the 15 students in her E-period class. Each student received five Jolly Ranchers. How many Jolly Ranchers were in the bag? So we want to figure out how many were in there in the beginning. My keyword in this problem is going to be split. Split means to divide. All right, so she divided a bag of Jolly Ranchers between 15 students. Well, right there tells me my equation. She took the Jolly Ranchers and divided it by 15. That equaled five Jolly Ranchers per student. From here, I can solve by multiplying by 15 on both sides. I get J is equal to 5 times 15. Uh, that should be 75. And then finally, I just add my label of there were 75. I'm just going to use JR for Jolly Ranchers in the bag. And I'm done. So I hope this lesson helped. The biggest thing to remember, show my work and what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. It's super important, guys. Remember to do that.